Hey, this is Materi, and this is the fifth video in my uh, sound design tutorial series thing. Um, so last time we went over LFOs and envelopes. If you didn't watch it, you should go ahead and watch it. But um, this one's going to be about effects and the routing tab, which they go hand in hand, actually. The insert effects and the routing. Um, so I guess I'll go into the effects first. So we just do a new sign, a new sound. I mean, we can just turn on our inserts, uh, insert one for in this case. So if I play, <clears throat> uh, now if we put a simple delay, we just kind of click on here, and we have two parameters for every. Um, effect but simple delay is just that it's just a single delay so we can put the dry if your dry wet all the way on you won't really hear it there will be a delay but it'll be on the whole signal so like one two three click so there's the the, the delay between when I click it and when it actually plays and that's because the dry wet's all the way on so if we just double click that's really where we want to be when it comes to delay is right in the middle and now you can actually hear that when I click there's a time which is right here until there's another signal played so if I turn it down it's almost instantaneous put it up you could hear there's a little delay and then there's another signal that ha uh, happens so you hear da 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 like that um, that's because I'm turning the time up so when I hit it's going to play, and then it's going to play again. So that's what a simple delay is. Um, it really, it's pretty nice. Uh, it's not really my first choice in sound or in effects or inserts, but uh, you can make um, cool sounds out of it. Um, I was just playing around with the effects just so I knew um, how they all worked before the tutorial and I actually made a pretty cool bell and I'll show you real quick um, how to do that so um, in sound design which this this tutorial is about <clears throat> it's all about thinking about the sound and how it's shaped so with the bell it's just a really high a high note it's usually nice and smooth sounding, but we'll just use a uh, like a square saw in between like that. And uh, it also, like we can put our cutoff so that it kind of cuts off the frequencies after a certain amount of time. Um, with the bell, it's a really fast attack because when you hit it, it, the sound is instantaneous. And then we could turn down down the sustain because you can't hit a bell and it'll just play forever. Um, that's just sound design, just thinking it through. You have a decay, which is how long the bell takes when you hit it until it stops playing. And I'm holding it, but I could also put the release up and also do that with the uh, amp envelope because remember you can't have the uh, an envelope on any parameter with the release on have any effect if your release on your amp amp is off because the sound will cut off before the envelope gets a, a chance to do its release so you can hear the effect the uh, delay has so you can hear that's a pretty cool sound just using the uh, simple delay <clears throat> um, now we have sample and hold which I only use for one sound I don't really know what else I could use it for but you have this dry wet knob and a pitch knob which sounds like it screws everything up because it actually does I don't know technically what it's doing but it sounds horrible and I never want to use it uh, but one sound you can make out of this, 
which you should know no matter what, is if you put your dry wet all the way up and you put your pitch somewhere around there and you just put like a low pass on, uh, you can put an LFO on your cutoff and would you look at this? Yeah, so your resonance has to be up on your uh, filter for the sound to actually do anything. But that's how you make a yeah sound. You use the uh, sample and hold. And that's really all I know about the sample and hold. I don't use it, so I can't really tell you what it's good for. Uh, bit crusher is, or bit crush, bit crusher is what they call it in here. It's, it's kind of like a distortion. Um, that's really, it crushes your bits. Uh, it's good for distorting sounds or like just like getting really nice, um, like crushed sounds, I guess. It's hard to explain. Um, add it when you're using distortion, really. Um, it's the same if you have Ableton and you use Redux. It's the same type of effect as that. It's like Redux is a sample and hold and like bit crushing type thing. If I do remember correctly. Um, next we have something called frequency shifter which does that. It shifts your frequencies. It's pretty self-explanatory. So yeah. Um, one cool thing about this is if you uh, double click on both your knobs, it kind of dulls down the sound weirdly enough. If you just double click on your pitch knob once again and you press the up arrow, press it a couple more times, I pressed it three times. It gives like a cool like LFO type sound. It's really nice. So that's a cool little sound that you can make with frequency shifter. And that pretty much works on any sound. I use it a lot um, for more drum step sounds. There is HPLP filter, which is a high pass, low pass filter. Um, to make your sound sound normal, you'd want the high pass down and the uh, low pass all the way up. And then you can move these. And you can see it's like if we set the serial or if we set our um, thing to serial and then we had like a low pass on one and a high pass on the other. Same exact concept. We have a low pass and then we have a high pass. And you can see even on the uh, spectrum it looks the same. Uh, one thing to note is that there is no resonance knob on this. So, yeah, you can do it this way if it's like a last minute thing. If you already have filters set up and you just need a low pass, um, it's really nice. I wish I thought of that before. I totally forgot that that was one of the uh, effects or insert effects, and it would have been really nice to uh, know that when I was making sounds earlier. Uh, sign shaper and parabolic shaper, pretty much the same thing. Sign shaper kind of destroys your signal a little bit more than parabolic shaper does. And what it does, both of these are uh, just like distortion effects. They add a lot of distortion. So I'll just choose a random one, Thunders 2. So D, like the normal one, and then I'll put the dry wet all the way up. You can see how much distortion it adds. Now the P shaper, parabolic shaper. A little bit of a mid-range tone to the distortion as opposed to the sign shaper which has a more of a high range distortion tone to it. So sign shaper is a little bit more highs. Uh, parabolic shaper is a little bit more on the lows or mids. 
sounds more like a guitar as opposed to some other instrument that uses uses distortion. I don't know. Um, hard clipper is another distortion thing. It's I'm pretty sure it simulates like clipping and a and uh, limiting. But it's nice for adding distortion, um, just like P Shaper and all that. So you might be wondering why I didn't use um, Insert 2 yet. So I'll, sh I'll do a low, like a low pass, high pass filter. And then I'll turn Insert 2 on and I'll put um, Sign Shape. Or maybe I should do that the reverse way. Put the low pass filter over here. Then set this one to parabolic shaper. And I'll just choose something so you can actually hear it. Okay, so you can see this insert two has no effect. Why is that? <clears throat> um, that is because this routing tab, <clears throat> excuse me, this routing tab is pretty important later on when you get more advanced and you start using like feedback <clears throat> you actually use it and it actually makes your sound 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 good so what does everything mean so you it's pretty easy it's just like a signal flow of your sound so you have all these oscillators which represent all these so oscillator one two three mod os noise and feed, feedback. So you could see OS one, two, three, noise and feedback. And the lines that come off of them show where they're going. So you can actually use this B to bypass all of the uh, filters and whatnot. So. Ah! Or, ah, geez, I thought that's what it did. Ah. Well, don't listen to me. Um, I could have sworn that's what the B did. Um, so you can see our sound goes through this line. It just like goes through um, like filter one, then it goes to your amp and all this effects and whatnot. And you can actually choose um, where your inserts get placed. So you can just click on them and you can place them. So I, if I want my Insert one to be before filter one. Or uh, let me turn this off. Or, or like, so before filter one. Insert one. Let me put the uh, sign chip on. Now, if I click insert one before. You get a completely different sound. And if you want it way over here, and you want insert to, you uh, it's just like you can click, hear what sounds good, and just play along with it. So it's really nice to know this routing tab. I know I didn't go so in depth with it, but it's really just like click on where you want something to um, come in. So if you want it before filter one or after filter one or after both the filters, you just click on insert one and it lights up or insert two and it lights up. Um, you can't have them both at the same time. It's kind of annoying, but um, it's really, really easy once you understand it. It's not really complicated to understand either. Um, just play with it, understand it, and it shouldn't take you too long. So that was this tutorial. I think next tutorial I'll go over the voicing tab and the effects over here. Or voicing tab and uh, oscillator tab and hopefully the effects. So thanks for watching and like, comment, subscribe, watch the next one and goodbye.